There is something we call the initial condition when dealing with um, integrals. So let's say you integrate the following function. Um, and if I do that, then the integral is going to be the integral of v of t by dt, because we're dealing with dt. Here is going to be t cubed over 3 minus 2t squared plus c. Okay, and you can pause and try this on your own if you want to. So this will be the integral. Now, I want to eliminate this plus c. So if I know this extra information, I know that the object was a distance 5 meter initially. How can I improve my integral? So the way you'd want to improve your integral is by using this piece of information. So we know that it's 5 meters, the distance is 5 uh, meters initially. Now, how does that help? Well, remember when we did um, talking about uh, kinematics, you know that distance or displacement derives to velocity. Okay, so that's the derivative. It means that if I integrate, I get back to displacement. So actually, my displacement formula is the following t cubed over 3 minus 2t squared plus c. And it tells me that it's, it's at a distance 5 meter initially. Now, the initially can translate to your time is equal to 0. Uh, sometimes they do actually give you extra information. Maybe when time equals to 3, the distance is that, and so on. These are all called initial conditions or boundary conditions. They tell you information about your integral, the, what you integrated, the function you integrated. Um, so it means that you can use this information to just know what this C is going to be. Now, this is one of the basic ways we can understand what C will be and other ways to find, um, to actually have more. Um, there are other things in integration later on that you can eliminate the C by, or you know more information. But the initial condition is where, now I'm going to substitute a zero here into my dis, uh, distance function or displacement function. And I know that initially it has to be equal to five. So that immediately tells me that c is equal to 5 if I solve this. So now I can actually improve my formula. I'm going to write the whole thing. But now it's more accurate than before. And it's plus 5. Sorry, the pen is acting up right now. So now it's more accurate. There's no ambiguity whether it's a plus c or what, what is the value of c. Is it 0? Is it an actual number? There you go. We have the answer. So sometimes you're given an initial condition, and that's why you put into your integral function to find out what the c is. So this is an example. If I have the derivative of a function is 6t squared plus 1, and I know that h of t is equal to 8, find h of t. So just to break it down, this is the derivative. And you need to find the original function, which means you have to integrate. And they also gave you um, the condition that you would use. So if I'm going to integrate. 6t squared plus 1. And note to the notation, this is going to be by dt, because t is what you're going to deal with. So pause the video, try this on your own, get to the final formula, and then uh, look at how I'm going to do this as well. So this is going to be 2t cubed plus t plus c. Um, you can, again, see that if I turn it to 2 cubed, I add the power. Um, I'm going to end up dividing by 3, which will cancel out with 2. If you integrate back, you need to make sure, if you der derive sorry, you need to make sure you get back to the integral. Now, we know that this is h of t. That that's what we tried. And we know that it's a 2, it's equal to 8. So if I substitute h of 2, 8 cubed plus, sorry, it's 2, 2 cubed. 2, 2 cubed plus 2 plus c equals to 8. So then if I simplify, it's going to be 16 plus 2 plus c equals to 8. And then I'm going to get a, we're going to get a negative answer. So c is equal to 10, negative 10.
Okay, so our final answer is h of t is equal to 2t cubed plus t minus 10. Okay, so we have all the... Um, well, we have all the values in there to help us, and that's what we call by the initial condition. It helps you eliminate, not eliminate the C, but actually know what the C value is.